Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to see you all here. So before I go ahead with today's video, I just want to take a moment and say thank you for all the comments and emails that I have been getting from you guys. Uh, I'm really happy and grateful uh, about the response that I'm getting for my videos. Uh, it kind of encourages me to keep doing this, keep putting out more videos. So I really want to say thank you uh, for all the encouragement and um, the support that I have been getting from you guys. Now coming back to today's topic, so today I want to demonstrate how to build an RNA-seq workflow in Bash. So we will start with uh, FastQ reads and uh, process these reads to ultimately get the count matrix. Uh, and while we do that, I also want to talk about various tools and how to set them up and how to essentially build a pipeline to um, quantify our reads uh, so that we can get a count matrix and that count matrix can be used for further analysis. So this is a detailed um, schematic representation of the workflow steps to process bulk RNA-seq data. Now, RNA-seq data can be um, used for various applications and uh, based on the organism being studied and the research goal, one can adopt um, different analysis strategies. So uh, for example, if a genome is available for the organism in study, then one can identify transcripts by mapping these RNA-seq reads uh, onto the genome. Uh, for organisms uh, where a uh, sequence genome is not available, then uh, these RNA-seq reads can be assembled uh, using de novo assembly into contigs and then mapped these contigs onto the transcriptome. Uh, for well annotated genomes like human uh, genome, researchers may choose to uh, base their RNA seq analysis on the existing annotation and reference uh, available and can also uh, try to identify uh, novel transcripts um, and also study their differential regulation. Besides that, um, one can also use RNA-seq data to identify um, allele specific expression and identify uh, disease associated single nucleotide polymorphisms and gene fusions, which can be disease causing variants in certain diseases like cancer. So depending on uh, the research goal, uh, the analysis strategy uh, can be selected and appropriately um, the tools and the pipeline can be designed uh, to answer um, the research questions, which would essentially give you the data that will help you to answer the question that you're trying to answer. So going over the schematic workflow to process bulk RNA-seq reads, the first step here is to perform quality control of reads from sequencer, which are in FASTQ files. So to perform quality control, we use tools like FASTQC, FASTQ screen, um, uh, RNA-seq-C. So the goal of this step is to remove uh, bases from the reads that are of poor quality. And in addition to that, also remove any adapter sequences uh, present. So in order to remove uh, these bases or adapter sequences, we need a trimming tool. So the next step is trimming. Um, and the tools commonly used here are cut adapt or trimomatic. Once you have trimmed the reads, you would again perform quality control to ensure that your reads are of good quality and all the poor quality bases or adapter sequences have been removed. Once we have the good quality data, we proceed to mapping. Now at this stage, the reads can either be mapped to a genome or can be mapped to a transcriptome. So when trying to map the reads to a genome, um, one should use a spliced aware aligner. So commonly used spliced aware aligners are STAR, uh, TOP HAT 2 and HYZAT 2. So to give you an idea on what spliced aware means, so as you know that RNA-seq reads are derived from mature mRNA. And mature mRNA contains exon sequences, it does not have intron. So if you try to align these uh, RNA sequences to um, the reference sequence uh, using an aligner which is not spliced aware, then it would essentially try to map these RNA-seq reads to reference sequence containing introns. Now, since these introns are not present in your RNA-seq reads, your reads will not align uh, to the reference sequence. So hence, you need an aligner which would know uh, not to try to align the RNA-seq uh, reads to the introns, but somehow identify the downstream exons and only align the RNA-seq reads to the exons and in ignore the introns. So it is important to use a spliced aware aligner uh, when aligning the RNA-seq reads to um, a genome. Now coming to mapping the reads to a transcriptome, one can use um, a splice unaware aligner or a quasi mapper. So some of the commonly used splice unaware aligners are Bowtie 2 and BWA. 
coming to quasi mappers these are also called alignment free mappers so basically these tools do not report out alignments but they only associate a read to a given transcript for quantification so essentially the output from these uh, quasi mappers are counts and the output from the aligners or that is spliced aware or spliced unaware aligners are bam files Salmon and Callisto are the commonly used quasi mappers, and since the output from these uh, mappers are counts, these counts can directly be used for differential expression analysis. Now, coming to the BAM files from the splice aware and the splice unaware aligners, these BAM files need to be uh, further processed uh, and quantified uh, to generate counts. So, some of the tools like HTC feature counts or RSEM can be used to quantify reads from these BAM files, and the read quantification can be uh, done at the gene level, at the transcript level, and at the exon levels. Once the quantification is complete, what we get essentially is counts, and these counts can be used for further downstream analysis, one of which uh, is uh, differential expression analysis. So since today we are hoping to process FASTQ or RNA-seq reads and uh, align it and quantify so that we get counts, uh, there are various um, combinations of tools uh, that you can use. So my preferred um, method to quantify uh, RNA-seq reads is uh, using STAR to align and RSEM to quantify reads. Uh, but today, however, we are going to use HISA 2 to align the reads and use feature counts to uh, quantify the aligned reads. So before I tell you why I choose HISA 2 and feature counts to align and quantify my RNA-seq reads, uh, let's talk about the runtimes, memory usage, and aligner accuracies uh, for different aligners. So these tables are taken from the HiSat paper in Nature Methods, and the plot on the left uh, talks about the runtimes and memory usage for HiSat and other spliced uh, aligners to align uh, a data set, uh, a lung fibroblast data set containing 109 million um, RNA seq reads, and the length of the reads is 101 base pair. And these runtimes and memory usage are reported on a system containing three CPU cores. Uh, it is a MacBook Pro with a 3.7 uh, gigahertz quad core Intel Xenon E5 processor and a 64 GB of RAM. And if you notice, uh, and before I go into the details of the runtimes and memory usage, uh, HiSat times one times two are just uh, running HiSat uh, using one pass approach, two pass approach, uh, and using different parameters basically. So if you look at the runtimes, uh, HiZat and STAR um, approaches have lowest runtimes compared to the others. But if you go on to the memory usage, you will see a stark difference between the memory uh, required uh, by the HiZat uh, HiZat approaches compared to the STAR. Um, STAR is extremely uh, fast, but it comes with a trade-off of uh, utilizing more memory. So coming to the plot on the right, uh, the plot on the right talks about the alignment accuracies of spliced alignment softwares uh, uh, run on 20 million simulated uh, reads and the read length for that data set was 100 base pairs. So if you look at the plot, you will see that the uh, four methods, that is HiSat, HiSat 2-pass approach, STAR 2-pass approach, and the top hat 2 obtained overall higher accuracies. Uh, these methods had sensitivity from 97.4% to 99.3%. So the next obvious question is, which aligner should I choose? So the choice of aligner depends on the accuracy of the aligner, which ultimately depends on uh, the goal of the analysis and what are you aiming to achieve out of your RNA-seq analysis. Uh, another consideration would be your system configuration. Um, in my case, I have a uh, MacBook Pro with an Apple M1 Pro chip and uh, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, so I chose HiZad because it provides uh, moderate to high sensitivity and at the same time it has better runtimes and requires uh, less memory. So HiZad 2 checks all the boxes and seems suitable for the type of analysis that I want to do today. So since we are building this pipeline in Bash, uh, there are certain aspects that I will not be covering in this video. So I expect that you have a basic understanding of Linux systems. You uh, have the ability to write basic Bash scripts. You understand Linux file systems and permissions. And lastly, you know how to download and install tools using command line. If these are some of the things that uh, you would like to learn, um, I will uh, add certain resources in the description section below. So uh, to build this pipeline, we will use four tools. We will use FastQC, Trimomatic, HiSat2, and Feature Counts. So before we go ahead and uh, build our pipeline, uh, I would quickly want to show you the setup. So this is a text editor uh, where essentially we will be writing our bash script. And this script will be executed in the terminal. 
so uh, i'm already in my uh, project folder and within the project folder i have four other folders and these are the contents of uh, each of these folders so i have a folder called hyzat2 within which i have another folder uh, called grch38 and i will talk about this a little more when we reach at that step in the data folder i have a demo.fastq file and i will add uh, the link to this file in the description section below so essentially this is the file uh, these are the reads that we'll try to assemble and um, generate the count matrix from uh, i have a, a cons uh, folder which is empty and i have a script folder which has a script which essentially is what we are trying to build here so a couple of things before we start um, it is always a good practice to time your script so the seconds is equals to zero will start counting the number of seconds once this is executed and at the end of the uh, script it will have the total duration in seconds so we can get an estimate of how much time does it does this take, uh, script take to run um another uh, good practice is to have the executables to your tools in your uh, path so that you do not have to write uh, the entire um, a path to your executable for each of your tools since we are using many tools here it will be uh, convenient and uh, easier to have these tools executables of these tools in your path so the first step uh, to process rna seq reads is to perform quality control and we perform quality control using a tool called fastqc now we can go back to the terminal and type fastqc hyphen h this will open up the help page for fastqc which will tell you what inputs uh, it expects and what is the output you'll get and in what order you're supposed to specify the inputs and the outputs and also some additional um, options that you can use so it's always recommended to do uh, take a look at um, the help page before you run any tool and this goes for uh, all the tools uh, uh, not just fastqc so since I know what options uh, I need to use, I'll directly uh, type the command. So I want to run fastqc on my input, which is the data. Uh, in the data folder, I have demo.fastq. And I want to specify the output to the data folder itself. So we will run um, this first step so that we can take a look at the quality of the reads and decide whether we need to trim it or not. So I'm going to save this and let's go to the terminal. So in the terminal, I'm going to go to my script folder and I'm going to run my pipeline. So make sure you have given permissions to your script. Once you've given the permissions, uh, you can run the script and you'll see that it has started analysis and it tells you how much percentage it has completed for uh, the fastq file. And finally, it says the analysis is complete and it took seven seconds to run. So now let's check the contents of the folder. So we can ls and we are in the script folder. So let's go to the data folder. And we can see that in addition to the fastq file, there are two other files being created. One is .html and one is .zip. So .html file is essentially uh, the fastqc report, which can be opened in a web browser. So let's go ahead and view this uh, .html file. So let's open the HTML file. So essentially, this is the fastqc report, which gives you a bunch of information about the quality of the reads. And uh, today, I will not be going into the details of each of these sections, as I plan to create a separate video where I'll be talking about the pre-alignment and the post-alignment QC. And I intend to cover each of these in further detail in that video. But for the sake of this video, uh, from the basic statistics, we can get information about the total number of sequences present, the encoding, um, whether any sequences are flagged as poor quality, what is the sequence length, and what is the percentage of GC. Uh, the next thing that we'll be looking at is the per base sequence quality, which tells us whether there are any reads having poor quality. And uh, we can see that all of our reads are of good quality. If the bases would have poor qualities having FRED scores less than 20, then we would essentially want to trim out those reads. But that is not the case in um, our data. It is observed that the quality for uh, of reads for, from most platforms will drop towards the end. This is often due to um, signal decay or phasing during the end of sequencing run. 
even if we have to trim uh, certain bases towards the end of the reeds due to poor quality it is recommended to maintain 80% length uh, of 80% uh, of the reed length uh, do not trim out too many reeds uh, which would make uh, the reeds too short um the other thing that we'll be looking at is the overrepresented sequences and adapter content and we can see that we do not have any adapter sequences um in our data if there are any adapter sequences then these those have to be trimmed out uh, but in our case we since we do not see any adapter content nor we do we see any poor quality bases uh, trimming is not required for our data but for the sake of the tutorial, um, I will uh, demonstrate how to trim uh, certain bases towards the end of um, the reads. In addition to that, there are there is also um, certain uh, debate whether trimming is really required or whether it really improves the mapping of RNA-seq reads. Uh, since a lot of uh, the aligners also soft clip the reads. So soft clipping of uh, sequencing reads allow uh, masking the portions of the reads that do not align to the reference. And the aligner that we are going to use today, Hyza 2, uh, also soft clips the uh, reads. So trimming poor quality data might not always yield significantly different results than using untrimmed reads. So let's go to a script to write the command to trim the uh, bases uh, from the end of the reads. So we can go to a script and I'm going to use Trimomatic. So we execute it like this. And I recommend you to read the uh, manual or the help page for Trimomatic, which tells you what each parameter is. Uh, so I'm, since I have single-ended reads, so I'm going to use it in the single-ended version. I'm going to mention four threads. The input to my data is going to be demo.fastq. The output is going to be demo underscore trim.fastq. So I would be able to distinguish between my trimmed and the untrimmed reads. Since I want to uh, trim the bases towards the end of my reads, so I will set trailing to 10. So basically I want to um, trim 10 um, bases towards the end of my read if it's below, uh, below certain quality or threshold quality. And lastly, convert my uh, quality scores to FRED33. So I'm going to save this now. And once we have run this, I'm going to echo a command saying Trimomatic finished running and once Trimomatic finishes running I'm going to run fastqc again but this time I'm going to use demo underscore trimmed fastq reads and I'm going to output it to the data folder so we can uh, once it is finished trimming we can see um, the fastqc report and see how trimming has made a difference to uh, the quality of our bases or rather our reads. So let us now go to our terminal and go to the script and now run the script again. So before I run the script, I just want to um, comment out the first uh, fastqc because I do not want to rerun the fastqc again on the demo.fastq. So I'm just going to comment it out and now we are going to run this uh, script again. So both are Trimomatic and FastQC has finished running and the FastQC on the demo trimmed data has finished running. So let us go to um, our folder to see the FastQC report. So let us go to the folder now and now we will be looking at demo underscore trimmed underscore FastQC dot HTML. So when we open this report and look at the per base sequence quality, you can see immediately the uh, quality of the bases towards the end of the reads have improved. So this is the before you can see that the blue line, which is the median quality score, goes down towards the end of the reads. But after trimming, you can see that the blue line does not go down any longer, but rather uh, it stays uh, in the green zone. So indicating that the bases um, have been, the reads have been devoid of poor quality bases as we have clipped or removed the uh, poor quality bases. So this indicates that we have removed poor quality bases from our reads and now we have good quality reads which we can use to um, align it to the reference uh, genome or a transcriptome. After trimming the reads, we will use the good quality reads to align to a genome and to align it, we will use HIZAD2 aligner. So the first step to run HIZAD is to generate genome indices. Uh, I will be downloading these genome indices from their website. So uh, I've already downloaded it, but I will show you where you can uh, get these indices. 
so you can search for hyzar2 download and it will take you to the hyzar2 um, website and in the under the download section you will see uh, a lot of indices uh, available which they have hosted on um, aws and you can get it for um, other genomes as well so i'm just going to right click and uh, copy a uh, link address and you can download it in the terminal using wget so i have already done that and i can show you um, within my hyzar2 folder i have a folder called grch38 so these are the genome indices from hyzar so we will be using this to um, align the reads to the reference genome so before we go ahead and write the command to align the reads, it is important for you to know whether your RNA-seq uh, reads have been generated using a stranded protocol. Using stand-specific information in mapping improves the resolution of multi-mapped reads and antisense overlap genes. If you're not sure whether your data is generated using a stranded protocol, uh, there are uh, some methods that you can use to identify whether your data is stranded. Uh, so I will add the link to those resources in the description section below. So let us write the command to align the reads. So we will use hyzar2 and um, the input files are um, fastq. So we will be using hyphen q. Then we will be um, mentioning the RNA strandness, which is reverse stranded. Then we will um, provide the path to the uh, genome indices. So that's grch38. I need you to provide the base name of these genome indices files. So let me show you what I mean by base names. So if we go to the hyzat2 folder, right now we are in the script folder. So we'll go to the hyzat2 folder and in the grch38 folder, you can see that all the files here start with uh, the name genome dot something. So this is essentially the base name. So this is what you need to provide um as the path to the genome indices file the next parameter is the uh, fastq file since our data is single ended read we give the parameter hyphen u which is unpaired and we provide the path to our demo trimmed dot fastq file and you can output this as a sam file but i do not want to do that i can redirect the output to sam tools and i can get a bam file and the bam file needs to be outputted in the hyzar2 folder itself so i'm just going to name the same thing but just change the extension to dot bam i'm going to comment out the earlier commands because i do not want to rerun the trimomatic and fastqc after that so we'll just run the alignment step um, in this uh, in this section so now let's save the script and go on to the terminal. In the terminal, let's go on to a script folder. And now let's run the RNA-seq pipeline. So the HiSat2 has finished running and it took one minute and 11 seconds uh, to run. So here are some stats or the summary of the read alignment. So we had total of these many reads and out of that, all of the reads were unpaired because we had single ended reads out of which 6.93% uh, of the reads aligned. Uh, the rest of the reads that is 86.60% aligned exactly one time. And there were around 6.47% of the reads that aligned more than one times. So overall we had a 93.0% alignment rate. And now we can go to the HyZAT folder to make sure that we see a BAM file. So we do see a demo underscore trim dot BAM file. So we can quickly take a look at this BAM file. And this is a header section. And once we scroll down, we can see uh, the information about the read alignments. Now that we've finished our read alignment, we have our aligned reads in a BAM file and we can use this BAM file to perform quantification. We will use feature counts tool to perform this quantification step. Now the way the feature counts work is that in a BAM file, we have a genomic location for each read that is aligned. 
feature count basically matches this genomic location of the read that is aligned to the genome annotation file which provides the genome location of the gene. So basically feature count can tell whether the read is mapped to a gene. So similarly, it summarizes the reads that is mapping to the same location or the same gene and can give us the counts or the reads that are mapping to a particular gene. So since feature counts matches the um, genomic location of the read to the genomic locations provided in a genome annotation file, we need to uh, get or download a genome annotation file. So I've already downloaded the genome annotation file, but I will show you where you can get these uh, annotation files. So you can go to Ensemble's website. So just type Ensemble in the browser and it will take you on the Ensemble website. And here you can click on human. And once you open that, you will uh, be able to find a panel that says genome, gene annotation. And you can download the FASTA or you can also download the GTF or the GFF3 file. So we will click on download GTF. So we'll take you to their FTP server. And here, this is the file that you essentially need. So you can click, right click on that and click on copy link address. And on the terminal, you can type wget and just paste the link. So it will download that file for you. I've already downloaded the file, so I wouldn't be doing it again. So once you have downloaded the gene annotation file, now let's run the feature counts uh, tool. And since the data is stranded, we want feature counts to perform a strand specific read counting. So uh, this parameter hyphen S requires is for stranded protocols and it requires an integer value. So since our data is reverse stranded, uh, I'm providing it a value of two. Next, we provide the location of our gene annotation file. So the gene annotation file is present in this folder. So this is essentially the name of the file. Then we provide the output. The output would be in the cons folder. And I want it to be demo feature counts.txt. This should be the name of my output file. And followed by that, we will provide the input BAM file, which is in the HiZAT folder, which is demo trim.bam. Again, I'm going to comment out the alignment step because we've already run the alignment. We do not want to run it again. So we'll just want to run the feature count step. So I'm going to save this. And now let's go to the terminal. And we are in the HiZAT folder. So let's go to the script folder and run our pipeline. So it has finished running and it took eight seconds to run. So let us go to our cons folder and in the cons folder, we can see two files being uh, created. The one is the demo underscore feature counts dot text, the file that we wanted, which has our counts data and the other one is dot text dot summary. So let's take a look at our demo feature counts text summary first. So basically the summary tells us how many reads have been assigned, how many have been unassigned due because they were unmapped, how many were unassigned because of multi-mapping or how many were unassigned because there was ambiguity. So it just gives us like overall um, summary of how many reads were um, accounted for and how many were unassigned. So going back to back into the folder or rather Taking a look at the feature counts file now, the file that has the um, counts data for us. So we can take a look at this file and it has a lot of information here. So if you look at the first line, uh, you'll see that we have gene ID, we have chromosome, we have start and end coordinates, we have strand information, we have the length, and we also have the last column that's named as HiSat 2 slash demo underscore trim dot band. So essentially, there are seven fields, and the last field would contain the uh, raw counts. Uh, so let us fetch only the first and the last fields from these files. So we can cut first and the seventh field. And when we do that, we, we have the gene ID and corresponding to that, we have the number of counts. So for a sum of the gene IDs, the counts is zero, but there are certain uh, numbers corresponding to certain gene IDs with their corresponding counts. Since we ran feature counts with just one sample, we have only one column here corresponding to counts. But if we run uh, feature counts with multiple BAM files, we would have multiple uh, columns 
uh, corresponding to multiple samples and each of these columns will have counts that corresponds to uh, these gene IDs. These counts are raw counts and these counts can eventually be used to generate a count matrix which can be used to perform differential expression analysis. So we have generated our pipeline. Now let's uncomment out all the commands and let's run the pipeline together uh, so that all the commands can be run um, in one go rather than running it one, uh, one, uh, one command at a time. I will also add some echo commands just to know whether um, that step has finished running. So hi Zach to finished running. And we'll echo each accounts finished running so that we can know that that step has um, successfully finished running. Now let's save this and let's go to the terminal so that we can run the entire pipeline in one go. Our pipeline finished running in one minute and 34 seconds. Uh, so it's always a good practice to uh, build your pipeline using one sample or a few number of samples on a pilot scale first. The run times and the memory required to run one sample or a few samples will help you to estimate uh, how much you need to, uh, how much time and memory you need to allocate to run multiple samples, which will help you eventually to scale up and to run your pipeline for multiple samples. So that's all I had for today's video. I hope you understood various aspects of building a pipeline to process bulk RNA-seq data to generate a count matrix. Uh, I will be adding the link to various resources I mentioned during the video in the description section below. I will also be uploading my code to the GitHub and the link of my GitHub repository will also be added to my description section. So if you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it, and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.